Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show. So happy to have you here. It is a great day to be alive. And I'm excited about the message I have to share with you today coming straight out. I guess what? My personal experience. Yeah, I got some more stuff to share. Uh, but before I do that, I want to invite you to, first of all, decide if you're an emotional eater or not, because if you are, there's a solution. Uh, you can find out if you're an emotional eater or a food addict or somewhere somewhere in between by going to HealYourHunger.com and taking the quiz. It's a free quiz, uh, but super informative because it is a spectrum. And when you find out where you are on the spectrum, then you know what action steps you need to take. Uh, also, join us at the Heal Your Hunger Tribe on Facebook. That is a private group for emotional eaters and those struggling with food and weight. So check that out. Just type in Heal Your Hunger Tribe. That's H-E-A-L, Heal Your Hunger Tribe on Facebook and request to join. And, uh, you know, we'll let you in. <laughs> so join us there uh, for some cool things and Facebook Lives and guest speakers. And uh, you'll also be the first to know about cool things that are happening. Now on with the show, uh, if you're his hysterical it is historical I love that saying I love that saying because it's true it's just true now if you've been with me for any length of time you know I talk all about feelings you know we're not talking about food here because food is a symptom you know talking about food and calories and you know uh, weight loss and all that stuff it's hooey okay it's a symptom of something much deeper it's not what you're eating, it's what's eating you. And usually it's uncomfortable feelings that we're not willing to face that drive us to the refrigerator time and time again. So, hence my topic for today. Uh, you know, if you find yourself getting triggered easily by something, guess what? There's something inside of you, there's a hook inside of you that's getting pulled. Your hook is getting triggered and pulled and uh, that means it's up to you to address it. It's not the situation outside that's hooking you. It's really what's inside. It's that hook that's already there that needs to be addressed and healed. And if you do that work, then people can can't trigger you um, as easily and so it's just really important to know that when you feel triggered when you feel upset when you when you go from zero to 60 really quickly and somebody just gets under your skin and you just feel like like I hate that person or that person's an ass or you, you know you just have this strong vehement feeling guess what that is coming from something inside of you um, not to say they're not an ass, okay? Like, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of them out there. Um, not as many as there are good people, but uh, definitely there's a few. There's basically about six really bad, bad people out there. They just move around a lot, okay? So if you ran into one, guess what? You know, the, the you know you ran into one of those X. But I digress. The point is when somebody acts whatever way they act and you get triggered, it's time to look within. Not to say you shouldn't speak up for yourself. You know, you know, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of speaking up, you know, instead of bearing it. Don't, you know, say it, don't stuff it. But at the same time, be honest about your feelings and what's going on. Use things that are outside, these triggers that, that happen. Use them to look within and see, is there something inside of me that is, you know, causing me to get so upset in this circumstance? And when we do that, that sleuthing work, that detective work, we are setting ourselves up for success in our lives because that means we are changing and growing and we're, we're, we're finding things um, that can really, uh, you know, be healed in us. And when we do that, then we can have more uh, equilibrium in the world. We can uh, have a better time in the world where we're not, you know, if we have all these hooks in us that are constantly getting pulled and triggered, you know, we're a mess. We're a mess. And guess what? We're overeating constantly because, you know, if we're a victim of the world and the world's circumstances and, and, the, and the things people say to us and the things people do, that there's no power in that. We've given all our power away. So looking at our own hooks and healing them, dissolving them is the only hope of having a real piece of emotion, you know, real peace of mind, emotional stability, and, and, a, and a sense of well-being where we don't get rattled so easily. Now, let's talk about those hooks. Let's talk about when we are hysterical. 
Uh, because I know for myself that I've got, you know, I've still got hooks in me. I've done a lot of work on myself. I'm so grateful for that, but there are still hooks. And usually these hooks come from deep places, okay? They come from trauma. They come from our childhood. Um, When they're super deep and hard to overcome, it's usually because they got installed very, very, uh, you know, early in our lifetime. And, uh, you know, when we have those wounds, that trauma, uh, what happens is we create stories in our lives. And when we have stories, we tend to attract the same situations as the original you know as what happened with the original wound I'll give you an example I uh, was sexually abused as a child and um, uh, it was kind of a you know circumstance where uh, it was from somebody who uh, wasn't fully an adult um, and had also been sexually abused because as we know hurt people hurt people so it was you know definitely a situation that was troubling um, definitely you know, twisted me. Okay. Definitely twisted me. And I've been dealing with it my entire life. Um, but I have dealt with it in so many ways. And yet the deepest of the wounds, the deepest aspects of that wound uh, do pop up once in a while. And I had that experience in the past couple days where I was getting upset over a situation that involved another person And I wanted to like get them to do right. Okay. So I'm, well, thank God I didn't do that because what was when I, when I sat on it for a little bit and didn't react, it didn't start, you know, trying to fix somebody else so that I felt better. Uh, Clue number one, if we're trying to fix somebody so that our feelings are more manageable, it's not the right thing to do. And that's what I was doing. So what I did is thankfully not go read somebody the riot act or try to manipulate them to change. Um, what I did is I started to, I actually had uh, through my meditation and inspiration, which was, um, this is my stuff. <laughs> okay. Now that may not be an inspiration to you, but it you know, when we're in that mode of blaming or in that mode of trying to fix something outside of ourselves so we feel better, it is inspiration. I mean, it's, it's an interruption uh, to an old pattern of trying to fix the outside so we feel better on the inside. So I had this inspiration and thank God I was meditating. Meditation is so powerful, you know. Sometimes I just meditate and and I feel peaceful, but I don't get big messages. And sometimes I do. Sometimes I get exactly what I need to hear. Um, But not every time. For those of you who are reluctant to meditate because you're you're not levitating when you meditate, it it doesn't happen that way. You know, you do it. you, You have a practice. You're consistent with it. And then once in a while, you get this flash of inspiration that changes everything. So this was one of those times and it's such a simple thing. I just, you know, had the thought, maybe this is my stuff and maybe it's really old stuff. And I got to see this is my fear and my fear of rejection because as a small child, you know, um, when I did experience the sexual abuse, part of the hardest thing about it, being totally transparent here and, um, this was this was probably one of the biggest revelations from the work that I've done on over the years, you know, trying to heal from that experience. The hardest part about that situation is when it stopped. Uh, when it stopped, um, I was unprepared for that. It was not in my control. It was in somebody else's control. They felt guilty and and wanted to turn around and and make it right and stopped is a first step to doing that um which overall was a good thing but for a young girl who doesn't know what's happening and is sort of used to a a certain way of being um that was really abrupt and it was uh it, it felt like a rejection it felt like a rejection and that cut really deep for me and I didn't have anybody to talk to about it because of course this was a secret I didn't have anybody to talk to about it um and I just I just held on to it and um, I ate over it, of course. I mean, of course, I just ballooned. I ate and I ate and I ate. So, um, you know, I got fat. (laughs) That was sort of the beginning. I was just starting into adolescence and I blew up like a balloon. If you've seen my my picture of me when I was 12 or so, uh, my face is completely round, you know, and so is my body. So it had a big impact on me and... Um, Of course, the overall, you know, experience did, um, but, you know, what I found from the work that I did, it was really when it stopped abruptly without my understanding 
why and with and without appropriate ways to deal with that um with to deal with the whole situation and with it stopping um I just internalized that and I took it as a rejection of my being I felt rejected um you know when we're sexual at an inappropriate age um we're so tender when we're sexual anytime you know uh if we allow ourselves to be vulnerable it's a very vulnerable experience um, and I was, of course, vulnerable. I was a child. So I had these feelings and, um, that I didn't know how to negotiate. And so I took this as an, a, a rejection, but in a rejection of my very being, because I was so, you know, my, my sexuality, the pers- you know, that, that part of me that is so private and so vulnerable, uh, felt stomped on, you know, felt rejected. And that, that, it wasn't just a sexual rejection. It was like a, a rejection of who I was fundamentally. And I took that really deeply, uh, really hard. And that has stuck with me. And so I have a big fear of rejection in any part of my life. I have, I wouldn't say it's a big, big fear, but there's definitely this fear of, of being rejected. And um, it, it affects a lot of things. It affects my business. It affects, um, I'm sure, how I show up in the world. So I've been trying to heal this. And I just had a circumstance happen in the past few days that really uh, showed me this wound again and showed me that I'm projecting onto somebody else um, really this fear of being rejected. And so what happened um, is that I got to write about it. I got to face it, not go to the other person, try to change them, but, you know, tend to my own rat killing, <laughs> deal with my stuff. And um, and I did that by writing. Um, I have a document on my computer that I just pull up whenever I'm having trouble. Um, and that's a good thing because I'm prepared when stuff comes up. It's just I pull it right out. It's literally, it's I haven't even closed it on my computer. It's in there. I pull it up and I just start typing away. And I did that in this situation. So that's just a plug for, you know, doing and having an ongoing writing practice because then when real stuff comes up you can really just easily move to that place of writing and addressing and so I did and I'll tell you a couple times today I've had very significant crying bouts you know like like long heartfelt guttural uh deep crying bouts um, you know, and so what happens when I write and if stuff comes up and I start to cry, I close my computer and I crawl up this, this time it was in a, on my couch, but sometimes it's my bed. I, I crawl onto the couch or in my bed and I, and I get in the fetal position and I just let the feelings come. I just let them come and they did. And I just, I just ran with it. I don't want to interrupt that crying. I want to get that stuff out. I want to get that pain out. That's one of the reasons why writing is so powerful because it just, it, you know, it connects us with our soul. It connects us with our subconscious. And so that pain that's been sitting there in my subconscious running the show, you know, the fear of rejection can definitely dictate my actions and my interactions with the world. Um, that stuff got revealed and I got to cry and go back to that place where I felt rejected and I had nobody to talk to, no one to talk to. You know, I just was, I, I didn't even fully know what was happening to me and I just went straight for the food. So... It was a powerful experience this morning and I'm, you know, I I felt so sad for that little girl who felt rejected and didn't have anybody to talk to. I mean, it makes me want to cry now, but um, I felt so sad for her. So this is, you know, and I cried and I I got it out, cried a couple times, you know, throughout the day and and, and as I was writing and and now I just feel, um, I feel better, you know, I feel uh, like some healing has taken place and I need that to take place because I don't want to be ruled by this fear of rejection and I don't want to be ruled by that wound, that experience as a child. I want to heal from that. And the reason why I bring this up is because um, so often, you know, people, they they say to me, you know, oh, I've been to therapy, I've done that. Like I've done the work. I've, you know, you know, I already know why I eat, you know, as if it's one thing and it's not. Um, there's no one thing. It's not sexual abuse only. It's not 
a, a physical abuse only. It's not mental abuse only. It's not um, the school you went to or the kind of cakes that your grandma made you. It's it's never one thing. Like as emotional eaters, we're you know we're we're caught up in in a myriad of feelings and experiences and and trauma that all need to be you know fleshed out in order to heal and. Um, people say I've, I've done the work I, you know, I'm, I'm done. I, you know, I've sort of like, they, they close the door on it. Like, like I've, I already, I already went to therapy. I already did that work. First of all, I want to say therapy does not heal emotional eating. Therapy can heal wounds, you know, if you do the work. Um, but in my experience, God does the healing. It's like, we have to do the work and then God does the healing. And when it comes to an addiction, like emotional eating or food addiction, something that's really gotten out of control, my experience is therapy won't heal that. Um, it's really important to be in community with other emotional eaters. It's important to have, um, you know, a, a, a proven plan for specifically overcoming emotional eating, which includes facing ourselves and our feelings. But um, therapy alone, my experience, will not turn the tide on your eating. So um, when you feel like, gee, I've done that, been there, done that, just know that there are many layers to this condition. Um, and there's many layers of healing. And here I am 30 plus years later on my couch in the fetal position, you know, doing some more healing work on a wound that, that cut very deep for me. And what I am is I'm open. I'm open to the opportunities that, that arise in my life that help me go deeper you know, and I never say, I, I've, you know, come on now, I've already did that work. Like I already healed from that relationship um, because apparently not, <laughs> you know, apparently there's more. And there's a lot of things where stuff comes up and then I'm like, wow, um, there's more, there's more to do. So uh, it's just really, really important um, that we remain open to always working on ourselves and continuing to heal, continuing to dig and continuing to get support and guidance. You know, don't try to do this stuff alone. Um, you know, I, I have a community that I'm a part of, um, both with Roy uh, um, and with other people in this path um, and the people I have as clients, they, you know, they have no idea how supportive they are of me. You know, when we get on our calls together, our group calls, they're so fulfilling and so nourishing. So, um, you know, in so many ways, I'm supported on this path of healing and I support others as well. And it works, you know, in unison um, to heal all of us. Uh, but I really want to just tell you, if it's historical, if you're, if it's, if you're hysterical, it is historical and use it, use whatever's happening in your life, you know, to, to dig deeper and to see uh, where there are places inside that need to be healed, you know, where you need to do the writing, where you need to do the talking and the praying. And so God can heal you. Uh, so, so important. Is it inconvenient? Yes. I had so many other plans this morning than to sit and write and cry. <laughs> Trust me, it was not convenient for me. But I believe there's nothing more important I could be doing than healing those wounds, you know, and those old beliefs uh, that somehow I'm, I'm unlovable. Somehow there's something flawed about me and I will always be rejected. So um, thank God for uh, such a simple path to healing. Thank God for that. I just want to encourage you to to not try to do this alone because chances are you won't be able to. Um, you know, this is deep stuff. If you want help from Heal Your Hunger, of course, reach out to us. Um, if you have some other way, uh, seek it. Uh, but don't, you know, don't go there alone. Um, and, and don't decide that you don't need to go there because you've done work in the past because it's one day at a time and there are many layers um, to to how we got where we got to and there are many layers of healing and opportunities for rising higher than we've ever been before so i hope that's helpful to you just remember if you're hysterical it's historical if you're triggered uh go go take a look at that what's triggering you you know look for it um just don't just blow it off because that's an opportunity for healing which is an opportunity for freedom I hope this is helpful. If you found it helpful, please um, comment in the tribe and let us know. And please share this with other people who might need it. Uh, thanks for listening. And, uh, you know, thanks for, for holding space for me sharing um, 
so vulnerably about my own pain you know I feel safe here because I know I'm talking to my people and um and when I do get feedback from you it's so caring and loving and I always appreciate that so and please re- leave a review on iTunes um, that's a big help as well love you so much I'll see you on the next show take care If you enjoyed this podcast and want to get free support, insider health info, exclusive invites to events, and more, visit HealYourHunger.com.